Hello, this is Terry from Fabric Junction, and I'm here today to show you how to do Gentleman's Fancy, another one of our six and a half inch blocks. In the quilt, let's see, it is right here. And as always, I make two, and the other one I think is towards the bottom, if I remember. But Gentleman's Fancy is kind of a a build up on square in the square. So if you ever done a square in the square, which is what the center is, and I have started on it, and I'll show you what I did to set my pieces. Of course I did opposite, and now I'm doing the opposite sides again. Again, what I did is I folded, did a little tiny press, did the same, one I fold to the right side, one I fold to the wrong side, so that they will cradle into each other. And then that's where I make my seam. <coughs> Now with it, I've actually created the block called square in a square. I pressed one of my seams just a little more than needed, so with a little bit of best press, I can get that little, there, fold out of there. Cut off my dog ears. Now what we're going to do again is we're going to add another square. Now this time I know where my point is from the previous one. So all I have to do is find the center of my triangles that I'm going to add. So again, I'm going to fold it, press, and this time it's not as important to make sure one is r pressed wrong side, one is right side, because we just want to find the center. And one more. Okay, now that we have the center, we can, I'm going to line up from this side, because I want to be able to see right where I cross my X. And that's where I want to stick my pin, and I'm going to line it down. Now, if, if you have a problem with your quarter inch, one of the things you can do is, let me grab something that I can mark, that it, you can mark on that little fold, just put a little mark that's exactly a quarter inch, and that'll help you match these up. I've got my fold and right there they match up. So now I put a pin straight in, get my pin straight up and down. And I'm going to take a second pin and pinning. Now what I'm going to do now is because I'm doing opposites I will go ahead and pin my other side as long as I have it here. Match it up. Get my pin straight up and down again. Make sure I've got... And I check to make sure that my overhang is about the same. I know it's not going to be identical all the time. But it, sh it should be about the same. And I want to stitch this from the side that I can see where I've crossed from the previous stitching. That way I know I, I shouldn't cut that tip off. Right there it is. Keep everything lined up. It's 
I have the two of them pinned, I can t just turn it and do the other side. Cross. There it is. Okay, now we're going to press. And then you can check to see that you didn't cut your points off. And then again, the same step for the other two. In the X, cross to the my fold. So now, we've actually got a square in a square in a square kind of situation. But, we worked hard at not cutting off our, our points here. We'll have to do the same when we do our next round. But our next piece is slightly different. So we got rid of our dog ears, set her back, and now we have three triangles that we need to put together. And this kind of angle is not the funnest one to line up, but when you do what you want, what you're looking for, is you want this to overhang by a quarter inch. And I'll just grab this little guy because he gives me kind of a quarter inch. The other thing is, is when you put it on your machine, if you haven't marked, because you can mark your quarter inch, and, I, and it's right there. So you can see from that lineup, I need to go up just a smidgen, because you would want this line to line up right there with that part of your tri other triangle. And what I do a lot of times is when I think I've got it really close, I go to the machine, I line up where my needle is going to hit and where my quarter inch seam allowance is, and that's then I know I'm lined up pretty straight. And then you should come out on the other side right at that same intersection. Looks like I missed mine by just a smidgen. Not much, about one stitch. Anyway, we'll proceed and press. And then we want to do the other side. Again, line it up. There we go.
press again. Get rid of that guy. And then we'll set it in our square. Now this one, we line up the same way as we have. The only difference is we know exactly where our intersection is here. So we can shove our pin straight into that where our stitching crosses. And we can move it right into the opposite side, right where the stitching crosses. Line it up. And as you line it up, sometimes you can feel that little extra bulk from all, all your seams and stuff that they should be lined up on top of each other. Second pin. Back to the machine. Now I think you've gotten the idea on how we line these all up. So I am, I'll stitch this one. I said it's lined up. I aim for my cross. I line up. And it's a little bulky. But there it is. And we don't want to have our tips coming off. It looks like I might have got just a smidgen of my one. Well, almost pressed out. Sometimes after you press it, they come back out. Okay, the idea now then is go ahead and do all four to put those on. These are done the same way as, as you saw me do this one. Find your center, mark it, sew it. And I think that you'll have fun making this and know exactly what you should be doing. Okay. If you're putting it into your quilt, you're done. If you're putting it in your other project, you're done. But if you're making the pot holder, on this one, I decided to add cornerstones in my border. So I would um, sew my left and right. I have my cornerstones on. I'd sew them top and bottom. Then I would get my back. So I have my backing fabric. I have a layer of cotton, and a layer of insole bright. And then I would put my block on there, do a little stitching, all kind. This is a great time to either learn stitch in the ditch or free motion. Stitch, trim, and bind. Check out the patterns. They're, they're all posted. All of our six and a half inch um, block patterns are posted on our blog spot or blog site I should say at fabricjunctionjewels.blogspot.com check out our website and do stop by and see us if you happen to be in town thank you again for watching us here at Fabric Junction